Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for the gift of your presence here this evening. Our scripture text for the Mass begin on page 193 of the Breaking Bread in front of you. And I invite you to please stand as we join together in singing our gathering hymn, O Bless the Lord, hymn number 560, 560, again in your Breaking Bread. again in this celebration of the Eucharist, let us pause a few moments, mindful of the presence of Christ among us and within us, and together let us acknowledge our sins, seeking God's mercy to prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus once again in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God. Glory to God in the highest. 
God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from me or from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. 
But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I give Thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name over all. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. Lord, on the day I called for help. is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. You give me life, though I walk amid affliction. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. Lord, on the day I call for help. your right hand you save me the Lord will accomplish this for me O Lord your merciful love is eternal discard not the work of your hands Lord on the day I call for A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead, in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. 
the word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek, and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks, for an egg. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Persistence. To persist is defined as to continue steadfastly or firmly in some state, purpose, or course of action, especially in spite of opposition. It also means to last or endure tenaciously. Persistence. That is our theme for this week. But where does persistence come from? How does a person acquire and sustain persistence? Persistence, I don't believe, is a standalone or isolated characteristic, but persistence seems to be the fruit or the result of something deeper. For a person to persist, at least as the dictionary defines the term, there must be something deeper that motivates the person to persist to choose to remain steadfast and firm in spite of opposition. There must be something that gives the persistent person a reason to go on, a reason to last or to endure tenaciously, to keep trying. So what is it? Our readings provide us with some clues, perhaps. In our gospel reading, we hear about the man who goes to his friend's house 
late at night asking for bread, bread that the man will then use to feed another friend who is staying with him. Note that the man looking for food is not going down the block knocking on every door. Now Jesus tells us that the man in need of food goes to the home of his friend. And I think we can safely presume that he went there because of their friendship. Because the man in need of food firmly believed that his friend would give him what he needed. But he didn't. At least not at first. That friend actually stood in opposition to the man seeking food for his other friend. So this man's persistence, the persistence that Jesus commends, was not based on the friendship with the man who initially refused to help. No, the commendable persistence found its source somewhere else. And I would submit that the source of that commendable persistence was the love that the man had for his hungry friend. So here we have this man out in the middle of the night seeking food so that he could feed him. And he persisted in his efforts until he was able to do so until he was able to give his friend what his friend needed. So it was love. Love that led the man to his friend's house in the middle of the night, and even though that friend said no, it was love that led that man to remain there until he got what he needed for his friend. Love for neighbor was at the heart of this man's persistence, and Jesus recommends that persistence to us today. Our first reading hits on similar themes, where we hear the familiar story of Abraham negotiating with God to save the city for the sake of the innocent. So we have Abraham advocating on behalf of the innocent, advocating out of love, I would submit, for those innocent people. And he starts the bidding, if you will, at 50 innocent people, and then he just keeps going all the way down to 10. Persistence. Persistence that Abraham also had as a result of his love of neighbor. And this virtue of persistence, like all other virtues, is perfectly embodied in God. God is persistent, steadfast and firm in his love for each of us, a persistence beyond words. Again, if we go back to that first reading where Abraham is negotiating with the Lord, we do not encounter an angry or an impatient God who becomes exasperated with Abraham as he makes his request for mercy for 50, then 45, then 40, 30, 20, 10. Nope, not an angry God, but rather we encounter a merciful Father who continues to love the people who have turned against him. God who persists in his love for all of humanity, humanity that he does not walk away from, any of us. He does not turn his back on us. Quite the opposite, he persists. Persists in the love by which his son Jesus was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, the embodiment of love who then lived among us, who by word and deed revealed to us the depths of God's love for us, who taught us how to live as his disciples, who followed the path given to him by our Father that led him to the praetorium where he was falsely accused, brutally scourged, mockingly ridiculed, and condemned to die for us. A path that led him then to take his cross and walk under its weight to Calvary for us. The cross to which he was then nailed for us, for his love for us, so that we may live with him in new life. A path that required more persistence, a path that revealed more love than any other path in all of human history. A path that is all the more incredible when we realize that Jesus did all of this even though, or perhaps I should say even after, we rejected him. He persisted anyway. That is to say, he loved us anyway. Not to lord it over us, but to be the means by which we can be raised from sin and death to rise in life with Christ. 
And of course, that point is made quite clearly in the second half of our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, where he says, And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. Dead in our transgressions. Sounds a lot like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah from our first reading. And yet, just like in our first reading, God did not give up on us. He did not stop loving us. He persisted. He persisted in a love that appeared in his son Jesus, whom we rejected and crucified, but a love that triumphed over sin and death. A persistence resulting from a love of us that recognizes our own needs, our own hungers to be with God, to be with our Father, and a desire of our Father to be with us. And that is our charge, or perhaps I should say that is our choice too. Will we persist in our faith? A faith that finds its source in the love that God first bestowed on us in our own baptism, and that he continues to grace us with in word and in sacrament. A faith that is nurtured and strengthened in prayer. Prayer by which we seek not our own pursuits, but by which we seek and find the Lord. Prayer by which we submit to the will of Father instead of pursuing our own will. Prayer by which we seek God's forgiveness, by which we are then strengthened to forgive others. Prayer by which we permit the Holy Spirit to lead us to knock on the door of the Lord, a door that God, our persistent and loving Father in heaven, assures us in no uncertain terms will be opened. That is the path that our readings speak to this weekend, a path that Jesus tells us not only in the parable in our gospel today, but also by his life and death will involve opposition, but a path to which each of us is called and a path that we can only traverse with Jesus if we remain in his love, that perfect and persistent love that will sustain us as we persist in our journey from this life to the next. Together as God's people, I invite you to please stand as we profess our faith by praying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together as God's people, let us now bring our prayers and petitions before our God. For the Church, may all members of the Church deepen in their belief of God and grow in relationship with Jesus through prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may God turn hearts away from violence, bring an end to warfare in Ukraine and Syria, and protect the vulnerable from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health and healing, May God curtail the new coronavirus variants, heal those who are ill, and protect the elderly and very young from the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need daily bread, may God open new opportunities for them to access food and touch the hearts of all who have an abundance to share more freely. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Tracy Wegner, Ron Jones, Tammy Bauer, Dean Knudsen, Ed Becker, John Murphy, Tom Abel, Barry Roberts, Lisa Peterson, and Tristan Voller. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Peg Casey and Francis Graves, may the dead who in baptism were gathered into the body of Christ and rose with him rejoice in the kingdom of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Christy Joan Pish and the intentions of the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we are grateful that we can gather together this evening to give you our thanks and our praise. We bring our prayers before you, fully aware of your love for us. We ask that you grant them, but only if they be your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song is number 442, Seek Ye First, 442. the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life 
and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Michael and Jeffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy. 
mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her husband, St. Joseph, with St. Thomas and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 340, God's Holy Gifts, 340.
number 436, 436. At this time, I invite our Eucharistic ministers to the shut-ins this evening to please come forward. My dear friends, we send you forth to the sick and the homebound of our parish community bearing the word of life in the body of Christ, together with the assurance of our love and concern. We pray that these gifts may strengthen our absent brothers and sisters and their communion with us through this journey of life to the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements. Um, we could use some additional help with our sacristan liturgical linens ministry. If you can help with that, give Alicia McFarland a call or contact the church office. All right, thank you for that. Um, two parishioners, Fran Graves and Peg Casey, died this past week, and their funerals will be on Tuesday and Friday, respectively. And um, so there will be no 9 a.m. Mass on Tuesday morning nor Friday morning. We will have the funeral Masses at 10 a.m. on those days. So keep Fran and Peg and their families in your prayers. Um, special thanks to our men's choir. They sounded particularly good tonight. Huh? And on July 27th, in the year of 2014, would have been almost eight years ago, my nephew, my grandnephew, was baptized here. And he's here tonight on a pilgrimage so he could experience his baptismal sight. So Anthony and his dear sister, Rose Berry, are back there. And I want you to welcome them. They're with their grandparents. <laughs> Anthony is nine. He just received his first Holy Communion. And, and Rosemary, I can't believe it, she's 13, getting older all the time. And, um, and I believe that's it. And enjoy the heat of the summer. All right. God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we go forth, let us sing number 434, Though the Mountains May Fall, 434. <laughs> 